Welcome to Tying Michigan's Best Trail Flies. Today we're going to tie a fly that's uh, really useful as a searching pattern during the summertime. It's called the deer fly, you know, a representation of one of those little things that take the chunk out of you from time to time. So we're going to turn the tables and tie something that the fish are going to eat. So let's get started with the deer fly. So to tie our deer fly imitation, I'm using a size 12 hook. Now this can be tied on a 10, a 12, a 14, a bigger one. I guess you would call it maybe a horse fly on the, on the bigger sizes, but uh, I like a 12. Excellent uh, summertime searching pattern. Again, we're gonna use uh, some black six aught thread and we're going to cover the shank. And this is a, another relatively simple fly and it has some history with it I'm going to share with you as we go through. But we'll take our thread back up a little ways and the, the body's made out of peacock. So I'm going to take uh, three or four strands of, of uh, peacock curl and tie it in. Now we demonstrated uh, this particular method uh, a while back with another fly, but when you're using peacock, if you've tied flies and fished flies with uh, peacock bodies, you found out two things. Uh, number one, it's a really good fish catcher. The, the fish seem to love peacock, but it's also fragile, so it needs to be reinforced, and there's a lot of different ways you can do that. The simplest way is to wrap the peacock on and then wrap the thread over through it and that reinforces it as well. But I use a little different method, almost like making my own peacock chenille, uh, and by throwing a loop up here like this, I'm making a loop out of the thread so the, so the loop is gonna end up looking like this. And then I take the peacock and weave it through both sides of that loop like this. And in effect, it, it kind of creates a chenille out of the peacock and the thread when you use this method. And it makes a, 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 a very secure fly when you do that. It takes a little bit longer, but the durability is uh, well worth it. And it's, you'll get used to you know, figuring out how much of this you need after you do it a couple of times. We're going to use it, we're going to get enough on here to cover the entire shank with this peacock. That should be enough. So we're going to wrap it, all you do now is wrap it forward, simply in overhand wraps. Now you've created pretty much your own chenille. That's, that's going to survive a lot of working over by fish teeth. But let's take our peacock all the way up to just barely behind the eye and we'll trap it there and get rid of our excess. So we should look like this at this point. Now, we make the wings out of the deer fly from some hen hackle tips like this. I've already taken two off. And you want uh, pretty good size, pretty thick ones to make, this, to make this wing. And the way I do it is I take these and I lay them right on top of each other and even up the tips. So they're just as even as you can get them. Lay them on, the, on top of the hook. You want that wing to be just slightly longer than the entire hook. Not just the shank, but the entire hook. Once you have that secured, we're going to switch hands. We're going to cut it off right there. And then we're going to tie this in just barely behind the eye of the hook. And tie it down a little bit as you go back. And then you can gradually separate these wings as you go back. And when you, when you separate the wings and wrap the thread over it, it creates that separation so the uh, outline looks like that little deer fly sitting at rest. When you get done, it should look something like this. It 
So we have a little bit of a delta effect there. And then we're going to finish that off once again with grizzly and brown hackle. And again, it doesn't matter which goes where, but uh, I got the brown on the back, so it matters not. And we've, we've got a little bit of head crowding here. You'd think you'd know better after 60 years. But, and you can wrap these singly or you can wrap them at once if you want, which I like to do. And then just trap it up here near the head. And we'll get rid of that excess, bind those down a little bit, whip our head off. Here's your completed deer fly, and hopefully when I turn it a little bit, you can see the uh, split and the wing. Uh, that's the kind of the way a deer fly looks when, when they're, they're at rest. So just a little bit of history on this fly. This fly originally came to us when I was working in a fly shop in downtown Grayling as the Lake Erie King. And I believe it was originated by Ann Schweigert of uh, Jack's Rod and Fly Shop in Roscommon, Michigan. Now, the original had a little tail on it. Uh, when we got it, uh, Bob Smock, the owner of the fly shop I was working at, took this fly, uh, he removed the tail, and he took the brown hackle off, left it with no tail and just a grizzly hackle, and renamed it the deer fly. Well, over a period of time, I decided uh, that it might be more effective by putting the brown hackle back on, which I did, and it did, uh, as far as I can see, make it a much more effective fly. So here's the finished product, uh, the deer fly, uh, by way of the uh, Lake Erie King. So uh, tie some up. It's a really good summertime searching pattern. And if you're, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're interested in buying any of my flies, Please use the number on the website and call me directly. And if you're a, a, a fly shop, uh, you can buy uh, my signature flies at, at wholesale prices through uh, Umpqua Feather Merchants. That would be the Tim's Hopper, which has the commercial name Scopper, the Para Emerger series, as well as the North Branch Drake. And if you're on my website and you're looking for something that you can't find there, especially Hackle, I have a ton of it that's not listed. So please give me a call. I think I'll be able to help you out. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you the next time.